I'm sure you're wondering what your cat's test results are going to look like on a raw diet. It's Giardia, Salmonella, Toxoplasmosis, all of these things are negative. What kind of preventative care can you do at home? We're going to insert this into his cheek pouch for five seconds to collect some saliva. What kind of yearly exams do we need to do with our cat's doctor? Draw the sample. And what are some natural remedies or homeopathic remedies that we can use to treat these problems that we might have? CBD and other terpenes are great for controlling inflammation. Hey friends, it's Justin Jericho here to talk to you about different tests that you might want to do with your cat. I certainly don't want you to think that a raw diet is just this magic pill that's going to make all of your cat's problems go away. But a properly balanced, fresh, raw food diet is certainly a great step in the right direction. It can help your cat's body get back to a sense of homeostasis. Preventative care is the absolute best care. It's much easier to prevent a disease than it is to treat a disease. So today I'm going to talk about different exams that you might want to do with your cat, different natural remedies and different homeopathic products that I use for Jericho based on the tests that I'm talking about today. Before we start, I have to mention that I discussed using all of these products with Jericho's doctors before I started using them. Jericho actually has two doctors. I like to get a second opinion on everything. That's just what I do. Obviously, you need to find what works for you. Also, this video is not sponsored. However, I've included affiliate links in the description below. So the first test that you'll want to do with your cat's doctor is a urinalysis. This is going to require a urine sample and then the veterinarian will send it out to the lab to test for multiple things. The urinalysis is important because it gives your cat's doctor clearer indication of how the kidneys are functioning and a few other things that relate to your cat's health. For example, urine specific gravity tells you if your cat's urine is concentrated or if it's dilute. And this is an indication of how well the kidneys are functioning. Additionally, things like pH, blood glucose, nitrogen, protein, all of these things help your cat's doctor figure out how your cat's doing on the inside. So your vet will send you this prepaid shipping label specifically for animal specimen. And then you'll get this biohazard pack. This one is for feces. This one is for urine. You'll get a sterile syringe to put the urine into the sample tube and then you'll get this bubble type thing that you put the samples in and then this goes inside this specimen. So here's the urine collection tube. Draw the sample. And then we're gonna plunge very, very slowly so that it doesn't spill all over the place. Close it tight. And then I'm going to set it upside down just to be sure that it doesn't leak out. And I also have these urine test strips. So if nothing's on the counter, I know that this isn't leaking. So I'm going to put it into the bubble mailer with the feces sample. Seal it up. And then put it into the specimen pack. And then this goes right into the refrigerator. So then I use the stick and the graph here on the back of the bottle to compare. Most of this is either, either positive or negative, but this one, you're in specific gravity. You have to compare the colors. So it looks like his is about 1050 and then pH is 6.5. There's a little bit of protein might be because his diet is high in protein, but when we get the labs back, we'll speak to the vet about what's normal and what's abnormal. And then below is the urinalysis. So they'll measure the color, the clarity, and it's supposed to be yellow and clear. Urine specific gravity, when I did the test, it was 1050, but this shows 1060. So that's why it's important to do the actual lab urinalysis instead of relying solely on the urine test strips. And then glucose, bilirubin, ketones, etc. negative, negative. Urine pH for this one is seven, but on the test strip it said 6.5. So again, that's why it's important to do the urinalysis through the lab. Urine protein and white blood cell, red blood cell, bacteria, everything here says none seen. But then we see right here that Jericho does have crystals in his urine. 
The next test that you'll want to do with your cat's doctor is a fecal exam. You can do a basic fecal exam that tests for one or two different parasites and bacteria, or you can do the full GI panel and that'll test for about five or six different parasites and bacteria. So here's some poopies I got from Jericho's litter box. This is the sample collection. So you're going to put enough to fill the scoop and then... Here's Jericho's lab results and they show the general fecal exam first, so ova and parasite, none seen, giardia negative. And then when we scroll down we get Jericho's full GI panel results, so different bacteria and parasites like Cabulobacter, panleukemia virus, giardia, salmonella, toxoplasmosis, all of these things are negative even though Jericho eats completely raw food. The next test that you'll want to do with your cat's doctor is a CBC. Urine and fecal samples you can collect at home and send them out to the lab, but with blood work, you have to have the vet do this for you. This is what the CBC blood work labs look like. On the left, you're going to see your cat's results, and on the right, it's going to see the normal values range. Anything that's in red is going to be considered high or low. So again, we see that Jericho's protein is high, his ALT is low, everything else on this page is within the normal range. Surprisingly here, the BUN and creatinine actually aren't in the high value range. Typically with raw feeding, they say that these levels might elevate, but with Jericho, they're actually within normal range. Then on page two, we have all of these things continued. So a few things, neutrophils, lymphocytes, were low and high, and the absolute lymphocytes and absolute monocytes were high and low. T4 is an indication of how well your cat's thyroid is working, and Jericho's within the normal range for that as well. Since Jericho's lymphocytes were high, we did a pathology on them to see the size and if it's normal. The diagnosis was mild lymphocytosis and suspect mild eosinophilia. The comments from the lab say that it's most consistent with chronic inflammation, and it also says a small increase in eosinophils also appears to be present and can be associated with hypersensitivity and other conditions. I use this website to understand Jericho's labs, so I'll leave a link in the description below, but it has literally every single type of value, explanation of why it could be high, why it could be low. They also talk about the cat's urinalysis labs. For Jericho's chronic inflammation and crystals, I'm using this CBD-rich hemp oil. CBD and other terpenes are great for controlling inflammation. This specific feline formula also includes cranberries, which are good for urinary tract health, kidney function, and cranberries are also an antioxidant. This is what the oil looks like, and the dropper has specific measurements so you can make sure that you give the proper dose. There's also sardine oil in here for omega-3 and 6 fatty acids. Those are also great for controlling inflammation. It also includes astaxanthin, which eliminates free radicals similar to an antioxidant. This is the CBD feline formula, and you can go to the website and click to see the lab results. So this is very important. You can see the sample date and all of the results. There are multiple lab results here, so you know exactly what you're giving your cat. The next test that you'll want to do with your cat's doctor is called an antibody titer test. This is another blood test that's going to test your cat's immunity against certain viruses and diseases. Antibody titer tests for Jericho, both rabies and FVCRP. So right here we have herpes virus. He's a little low, negative four, but since Jericho is the only cat in my household, he's not at risk for getting herpes virus, so I decided not to vaccinate him for this, even though he's low. Panleukemia results are high. That means that he is already immune to panleukemia. He has proper amounts of antibodies for it. Callus virus is also good. He's in the positive, so he's immunized against this as well. And if you scroll down, they explain what an antibody titer test does, the different ranges for low, medium, high, or very high immunity. I also did the rabies titer test, and he's at 13 when the reportable range is 0.1 to 15. So he's also immunized against rabies as well. An antibody titer test is much better than just over vaccinating. Ballistic veterinarians say that many vaccines might actually last the lifetime of your cat. And doing another vaccine when your cat is already immune to a disease doesn't really make sense. It doesn't offer extra protection. Your cat is already protected against this disease. 
One test that you can do at home easily is a health and breed DNA test. This is BasePaw's website and the BasePaw's Breed and Health Cat DNA test can help owners learn about their cat's breed, health, traits, and habits. And the report includes comparison to four main breed groups and 21 individual breeds, a lifetime of breed report updates, 38 genetic markers associated with 16 diseases and more. So here's the Base Paws Cat DNA Test Kit. And it's very important that you keep this box after you receive it. So we're gonna open the sides. So first what you're going to do is go to Base Paws website, basepaws.com slash register. And on the collection tube that you get in this box, there's a digit barcode that you need to go on the website to register. And that's how they track your cat's results back to you is through registering on their website. And then two, you're going to collect the sample based on these instructions. And three, you're going to return the sample in this biohazard pack. According to these instructions, again, you're going to use this box that you received this test tube. You're going to use this box to ship it back to Base Paws. All right, so now I'm going to open the test tube kit, and there's a little sponge thing here, and that's what we're going to collect Jericho's saliva with. So I'm gonna sit Jericho in front of me on the turlet and we're going to insert this into his cheek pouch for five seconds to collect some saliva. One, two, three, four, five. Hold it upright and unscrew. Be careful not to spill this liquid. So I'm holding both very tightly and then drop it in and make sure it's closed tightly. It says invert and shake 10, 10 times. That's going to allow the mixture here to mix with the sample. Now we have our biohazard pack and the sample. So we're going to push the sample through the pack and then pull this up. And seal. Put it back in the box. Before you seal the box, make sure you register the specific code that's on the tube on basepaws.com slash register. Now, you fold up the box and it's all sealed and ready to go. The DNA test will take about four to six weeks after Baseballs receives your cat's sample. I just sent out Jericho's sample the day before that I'm recording this, so I'll make another video with an update on his results. I'm also working on Jericho's dental health, so I have these homeopathic remedies by Homeo Animal. This one is a pellet that I crush into his food, and these two are for spraying into his mouth. So this one's specifically for dissolving tartar, this one specifically for allevi alleviating gingivitis. Here's Homeo Animal's website. You can shop by remedies category on the left, but I actually recommend going with a free consultation because then you can talk about your different needs and they can recommend remedies that'll work for your cat's individual needs. If you want to check out Jericho's raw feeding routine, check out that video right over Mia. Thanks for watching.